If you're wondering about domain names or if you're looking to set one up, this is a good video for you. We're going to talk a lot about setting up domains and configuring them. And this is all about domains, all about the domain name system or DNS. So those domain names or website addresses, they're created through a authoritative registrar. You go to a registrar that has authority to create the domain and usually your access is restricted to your user account. In other words here, only your account, only your login information you set up that you've purchased that domain through has access to get in and manipulate and change those records. Ownership is tracked through Whois records that are also attached to that domain and those are publicly accessible through the Whois database. So anyone can see your information that you have on there, your email address, your phone number, your, your address that you've got in there, uh, your name. That's all public Whois information. And they're pointed at servers. They have a, they have NS records or name service records that are attached to that domain right at that registrar. And those will point to wherever the DNS servers are supposed to be authoritative for that. Sometimes they're hosted right there, but oftentimes they're at least on a different machine. And that will point it to that exact machine where they are. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the records that would be on zone files. That's where those name services, name service records are going to be pointed to. They'll be pointed to a DNS server that has zone file records on it for that domain. Uh, there's four major types of records. Each record is going to have its type as a part of that record. And each of these records they're going to have a type, they're going to have a name that they're for, whether they're for the main domain or whether they're for a subdomain, and where it points to, and what type of pointing to is going to depend on what type of record we're dealing with. If we're dealing with an A record, it's going to be an, I, it's going to be an IP address, version 4 IP address. If it's a quadruple A record, it's going to be an IP version 6 address. If it's a C name record, it's going to be pointing to a different domain name. And if it's a MX or mail exchanger record, it's going to point to a domain name that handles the email for that, for whatever that name is. So whether it's the main domain or whether it's email for a subdomain, but that will be there. And then t time to live, TTL, is how many seconds does it take from the time that it's first pulled from the authoritative server before it is supposed to be expired. Having a very high number on the TTL means that it takes longer to change those records and make them go all throughout the internet. So, but it also reduces your bandwidth uh, not as many requests have to be made because they're taking longer to expire. So different servers, other DNS servers that are not authoritative for that domain may also, like say an ISP, an internet service provider, may also be running a DNS server. They can go and grab the domain record from the authoritative server and they will keep it cached. And also on individual computers they usually will keep a cache. Anyone who has requested that usually has a cache of what that record is. So that TTL tells it when do you need, when are you not supposed to go based on your cached information? When are you supposed to go and get it back from the authoritative server? And then priority only applies out of the to the mail exchanger records. The higher the the lower the priority number the higher the actual priority so you know if you've got one that's a a 10 and you've got another one that's a 20 you can have multiple mail exchangers multiple servers to handle the mail if one is a 10 on the priority and the next one is a 20 the 10 is going to be used first 
and then if the 10 cannot receive the mail for some reason it will try the 20 for the priority so these are ways to create the domain and and describe the uh, It's to create the domain, and it's also to uh, describe all the different subdomains and other features of it, such as email, where all this stuff goes. So here are some examples as far as records that we have. This is for a, this is actually a fictitious, you'll see it's a .wan address, it's not a real TLD. Uh, this is created on a server of mine that I'm going to be using to demonstrate a number of these things for this channel and so here though we can see the initial authoritative A record if my domain is playpen.wan this will be expiring in 14,400 seconds it's the A record and it points to a IP version 4 address as an A record would. If I was going to try and point this to an IP version 6, this would need to be a triple A record. And we come down here and we've got, this time I'm just going to point this, and this is a good practice to do because you don't want to have a whole, I mean A records are a little bit faster to access, but they also are slower to change and that's why I like to I like to point with C names at A records a lot of times. Because it will go out there and it will get cached. It's only the first time that it takes just a few milliseconds longer to work with a C name as opposed to a uh, as opposed to an A record. But here we've got we're gonna point www dot because it's all gotta be individualized. So my www dot is not automatically pointed. We are used to accessing our websites with www dot whatever it be dot the tld dot com dot net dot org whatever it be. But to make that www happen, you also need a record for that. And then if I was going to host my, it's in this case I'm hosting my email on that same at the same server. But if I was going to host it elsewhere, I would be able to go ahead and put this as an A record and to whatever other site. And in this case, or I could just straight say uh, that I'm not going to point this at email here. I'm not going to point that at email.playpen.wan. I'm going to point that at whatever other server that would be. But so these are the records in action. And I... I figured that would help to explain a lot more about how DNS works. It's going to look at these things here as I call, you know, say, you know, www.playpen.wan. It's going to look that up and it's going to say, oh, it's the same as playpen.wan. Playpen.wan is this IP. I need to call this IP to get whatever I need. So hopefully that makes it pretty understandable for DNS. That's the general gist of how DNS works, how it's set up. Thank you for watching.